Thanks very much. Um, so for those who are in my testing talk, there's a tiny bit of overlap, but this is more a high-level thing. So, um, so for those who are in my talk, just a little quick thing about myself. As Steve said, I've been, I've been building um, web apps since 1998, mostly in PHP, but I have done JavaScript and Perl and Python and Ruby. So I've done a little bit of everything, um, but I keep coming back to PHP because that's kind of what I'm most comfortable with, and there's kind of like a path of least resistance thing um, going on. Um, and 12 years ago, I got um, I had the experience of working some insane hours uh, on a dating site, and things all went to hell. And um, I was determined to never go through that again. I was trying to find ways to um, protect myself from myself with code. And so one of the things I, I discovered was testing. But when I first got into it, all the tools that we take for granted now weren't around. So I discovered that really testing is hard. Um, it's not easy, I won't lie to you, uh, especially doing legacy applications if you don't have any tests. That's really super hard as well. So these days, um, I've been thinking more about not just writing tests, but like what do you need to know in order to actually start writing tests? And um, when I started planning things and looking at, well, what did I actually have to teach myself? It is quite a bit, and so there's a good analogy. Um, those of you probably know that I, I play this ridiculous card game, um, Crack the Gathering. Um, this, is not my, this is not my collection, because um, I actually have more cards than that. Um, uh, but in, in the game of Magic the Gathering, you have the game itself that you're playing against people, but there's this concept of what they call the meta game, which is the game around the game, which is all the things that you need to understand and learn in order to play the game at its highest levels. I mean, this is a game that has a pro tour, and there's a hall of fame, and whereas I will never, ever, ever approach any of that in my play, I think I'll be forever be a frustrated casual player. Um, but there's all these things you need to learn to be really effective at playing the game. And for testing, there is the same thing. There almost is like a, a meta game to testing. And I realize I'm in Mormon country, so I don't know how well this is gonna go over, but we're really talking about the seven deadly sins when it comes to testing. There's seven big obstacles that you have to learn how to overcome if you want to become effective at, at testing. So we're going to go through all the sins and how they apply. First of all, we have anger, right? Which is one I'm unfortunately quite familiar with. Um, is that the configuring the tools uh, to do testing um, is difficult. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but not just the tools themselves, but getting our application in a state that we can do stuff. So of course, I'm sure you've heard about this thing over and over again, Composer, okay? Composer was, is really, I, I think that Composer was a missing tool for the whole PHP metagame that has just improved things immensely and made it way easier for people to share code with each other and in such a way to make it super easy to um, integrate it into your existing application. The fact that that Composer generates autoloaders for you means that that's a whole world of pain that when I first learned about autoloaders, I had to do it all by hand. Um, and now Composer takes care of that. So. Um, so to tamp down the anger that you're feeling when you're trying to test your stuff, right? Use Composer. Really, this, really make the commitment to respecting convention over um, uh, configuration. It's like a Rails thing. They were really big on that. We're going to make a whole bunch of really strongly held opinions about how something should work. And if you follow those opinions, your app de development will get um, a lot quicker. I believe in that as well, because um, speed matters. So think about when you're looking at, um, looking at bringing in third-party libraries to your stuff. Uh, to really think about, change what you're doing to match the tools instead of uh, always spending all this time fighting because you think, uh, you think your, your problem is unique. It probably isn't, and you should probably just go with the flow. Um, so again, comp composer plus packages, library management, and it also keeps your dependencies as part of the project so you eliminate that one uh, dreaded error report that, well, uh, well, bro, it works fine on my machine. Um, using something like composer eliminates that because then you have no more excuses. Like, you're supposed to be using a specific version of a library. You shouldn't be getting that problem. Um, and so because of the power of Composer, right, making your own packages uh, is available to others is easy. I had a project where I took a, a library that was a wrapper around um, a Java-based um, proxy that I was using for testing. Um, I was able to grab a PHP wrapper for it, um, get some sanity into the coding standards for it, and then make it available for other people to uh, to use, it took an afternoon um, from start to finish. And also, by following something like Composer, you're getting standardization, and standardization is also a key to eliminating a lot of angry um, bugs that happen in your code, because you can count on things being in the same place 
all the time. And finally, on the anger side, avoid the my project is so <laughs> unique. No, you're not a snowflake, buddy. You're just like the rest of us. Your project is not as important as you think it is, and it's not as different as you think it is. Um, I was, because I've been doing this for 16 years, and I really think that I see every four years, I guess it must be a crop of like computer science graduates hit the, uh, hit the market, and they think that they know everything already, and that this problem that they're solving is unique. Yeah, no, it's go use Google, buddy. You'll find out. Um, so use Composer to just make things easier to integrate. So then we have the pride sin that people are, are going up against the obstacle, right? Developers are not taught how to test. I don't think, I would be surprised if any computer science curriculum is actually teaching um, unit testing. You may do it just because you have to, but when you hit the ground running as a developer, there's nobody there. I had to learn all this stuff on my own. There was nobody there who was into it. Because we have this factor, right? I mean, I know this is a really brutal quote, but sometimes you give up on people, right? Not because you don't care, but because they don't. I mean, I run into lots of people that um, don't give a damn about testing, and that's fine. I just make mental notes to not work with them because I'll be spending way more time trying to fix their problems. So lose the pride, lose the ego, understand that there's stuff that you need to know. And like I said, this is 2014. All the tools to do testing, they are available. They are actually quite easy um, to learn because people like me went through all this stuff and started documenting what we had to do. So think about pride, right? Because it is, part of swallowing pride is understanding that you need help. And really, it is impossible to learn how to test code in isolation, right? Like trying to learn it all by yourself, it's not going to happen. So I, so as first suggestion, I suggest getting involved in mentorships. Um, I got involved in um, uh, the PHP mentoring, so phpmentoring.org. I got involved in that very early on. And um, I helped two uh, kind of junior to mid-level developers. Uh, I, I would spend one night a week talking to them on Skype, just about anything, even being a friend with them as well, beyond just doing testing stuff. Um, and they've gone on to like really good professional um, success, and they're now going around to conferences um, speaking and talking about testing and other topics. So consider trying to find someone um, to mentor with, someone who's working on an area that you're interested in. Pick their brain, find out um, what's going on. If you're into going on to IRC, go on to Freenode, I hang out in the PHP mentoring channel. I'm always happy to answer questions of people to try to push them along. So on the pride side of things too, right? It always takes two to test. I'm a big believer in pair programming. I know a lot of people don't like it. Um, as a guy who's worked remotely for seven years, I have tons of experience of basically doing remote pair programming with people. It's the easiest way to learn something because somebody always has a different opinion than you on how to do something. And really, what you end up having is one person is doing the coding work and the other person is pointing out the changes that you need to make, okay? So along with the idea of doing um, pair programming, I also highly recommend um, code reviews. Uh, this is a very, very true thing from uh, XKCD, right? The only valid measurement of your code and review is the uh, WTFs per minute. Um, good code will have a few, bad code will have a ton. Um, I know even my stuff, I, I, I joke that I must set a record uh, at work for the number of times my uh, tickets get rejected for code review violations. Um, so yeah, so to summarize, right? Mentoring is an easy way to make connections as well with people. Um, like I said, my own apprentices um, have gone on to success. And it's also, if, you, if you're a big consumer of open source software, it's often very hard. If, you're not a, if, you, if you can't or don't want to invest the time in coding and doing patches, or you don't want to write documentation or whatever, a, a very easy way to give back is by volunteering your time uh, to teach other people stuff. Um, it's an easy way to give back. So you know, drop the pride, join me, and uh, we're going to rule the universe together. So next one, because I'm rushing through this because they only gave me, and plus Jeremy stole some of my time. Um, we'll talk about um, the sin of greed and when it applies to code. Tightly coupled code is extremely common. It's the number one obstacle to writing um, coherent tests is that you have such a tangle of dependencies that it will require um, ridiculous levels of effort to decouple everything. So some of the things that we can do to make our code less greedy and easier to test, learn about dependency injection, okay? Learn about Demeter's Law, which is a nice fancy, which is simply a nice fancy uh, description of what um, dependency injection is. And, but, and the more important thing is to understand why coupling is bad. Coupling is bad just simply because you're limiting your options and your ability to test your code by you're making your code create its dependencies instead of you passing them into them. And that becomes important when you go to start writing unit tests where you're going to be mocking things and creating test doubles. Um, so, in terms of, if we look at the greed side thing, we talk about dependent injection, you probably know it by its less complicated name. You probably do it all the time. It's known as passing parameters in. It's just a fancy label that computer science people wanted to keep to themselves. I mean, this is really 
This is the number one testing concept that people have to try to learn. This is really it. This is, this is all about dependency injection. That's the bad code at the top where we're creating a new object inside our function. The good one says, good method for decoupling is you create it outside and inject it in. When you hear dependency injection, that's all it is. It's super simple. But it's, it's such a simple concept that has big time ramifications for your code base. So take some time, learn about um, dependency injection containers and service locators. I know the Symphony folks love their containers. I know the Laravel folks love their facade. No, I'm not supposed to say that. Love their containers. Um, Learn about them. Learn the difference between constructor injection. Learn the difference between um, setter injection. Um, also learn, because I talked about this in my talk, that if, be careful um, because dependency injection containers and service locators, oftentimes they're really just a fancy wrapper around a global, around a globally available object. And uh, old school developers like me remember the dependency hell that you got into when you're using global, I mean, register globals. I mean, that's still biting people today and it's been deprecated and removed I don't know how long ago. Um, but yeah, so be careful that you don't end up with the container, your, with your code being tightly coupled to the container. Don't pass the container around if you can avoid it. Um, finally, gluttony. For a guy like me who went on a diet and lost 50 pounds, I'm very familiar with gluttony. Um, gluttonous code, very common problem for testing is too many dependencies. Um, you really won't know how many dependencies you have until you need to create mocks for them. I've written um, unit tests where I've had about 100 lines of setup to create all my test doubles and then two lines to test my code. And that's a, a sure sign that you have a whole bunch of ridiculous uh, dependencies that are all really, really tightly coupled together. So think about your dependencies. Um, every dependency you add to your code, think about do I really need it? Do I really need to use this third party um, HTTP client? Or can I write my own using like the, uh, the streams wrappers in PHP? Things like that. Try to simplify. Um, reduce your dependencies. If you guys were here and you went to Ed's um, talk on um, more code, more troubles, um, Ed and I on our podcast have talked at length about this idea of reducing your dependency on code and trying to write as much pure PHP as you can. Keep that in mind that sometimes these libraries and components are very attractive and they can solve a bunch of problems for you. But because this is all code you're going to have to drag around with your app and maybe it's not as tested as you, as you want. So sum things up a little bit here. Just mocking is just simply, we hear talking about this, mocking is just simply the creation of copies of dependencies. Um, you create those dependencies in a specific state, and then the easy way to see if your code is testable is can you easily inject those dependencies in. If you find in your methods you're doing something equals new, whatever, um, yeah, you're going to have a lot of work to refactor stuff. Um, I wrote just a quick little blog post. If you look at my blog, littleheart.net slash at the keyboard, the archive thing can find it. I wrote a thing on this idea of meta testing and, and trying to understand uh, mocks because mocks is, again, uh, understanding mocks, I think, is the last conceptual barrier you have to get past. And another one that caused lots of arguments, sloth and laziness uh, in developers. And this is a, a quote that I've heard many, many times that people complain about, that their managers say to them, you are paid to write code, not tests. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. Um, I'm a, I mean, I know that Erasmus has done a very famous quote where he says, I hate programming, but I like solving problems. And of course, people who hate PHP always drop the second part off, and they point and say, oh, the guy who invented the language doesn't even like programming, and that's why PHP is such a mess. Um, but I, I get paid to solve problems. That's why, that's why I get to sit at home in my home office and I don't have to fight traffic, because they, they aim me at problems that need solving. So I'm getting paid to solve problems. So solving those problems includes tests. Okay, it's, for me, it's a non-negotiable thing. But I think many people who are, um, who are not technical, and even some technical people that don't know how to write tests, also make the excuse that they, they discount what the cost of fixing bugs actually is. Because we only have a finite amount of time to work. My fingers only have so many keystrokes in them before carpal tunnel syndrome will cripple me, although I don't work hard enough to ever get carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, but they discount the cost of fixing them, right? Uh, and many people also discount um, the cost of missed opportunities. If you think about, you have a whole bunch of features that need to get done. If your developers, um, of course, they're smart and they don't give me any developers under me. I'll never be management. Um, but the people that are working for you, you would rather them working on new stuff than having to go back and fix bugs. So testing is an easy way to try to catch all those bugs um, to reduce your opportunity costs. Um, because really, uh, test-driven development is also a way to shift the cost of fixing bugs to a cheaper part of the development cycle, okay? Um, 
because, t because test-driven development is really a is almost like a design pattern, design practice. You're using tests to guide how you're building something. And by doing the test first, you're forcing yourself to write code in a certain way. And it feels unnatural when you first do it, but eventually it becomes second nature. I know that, uh, I, I don't know if I have the quote here, but I think I do. Um, this 20% thing here, um, IBM and Microsoft, in a rare showing of partisan nonpartisanship, uh, did a study together. And they gave a bunch of teams the same task to solve, and they asked some of them to use TDD and some of them not to. And what they found was that the teams that did TDD um, took 20 to 40% more time to get the task done, but it resulted in 40 to 90% fewer bugs. So if you're like me and you want to tweak the numbers to your advantage, you can lie to your boss and say, hey, all we need is to write all these tests, we need one more extra day a week, and we'll have 90% less bugs. And only, I mean, what manager, what... You have to be pretty soulless and cold to not, uh, to not look at that in terms of monetary, to say with only 20% more time, we'll end up with way fewer bugs, okay? Um, so like, I, I don't think I have a, maybe I have a slide, but I'll talk about it now and we can skip over it. I really look at the cost of fixing a bug. If you look at developer's time, uh, fixing a bug in development costs X, right? Whatever the rate is. Fixing the bug that's found by a tester costs 2x. It costs the time of the tester, the time of the developer to go and fix it. If that bug makes it up into production, I believe the cost is actually 10 times what it would have cost because you'll get panic and overtime and you'll have multiple people looking at the same problem and desperately trying to fix the problem because maybe your website is down and you can't accept, you can't um, sell anything anymore. And you know, downtime can kill companies. If your site is offline for a day, that could be in some cases hundreds of thousands of dollars in lost revenue. And again, opportunity cost is huge. Every minute that your developers are fixing bugs that could have been found with tests is money that you're potentially losing. And more importantly for me, for tests, I like to write tests so I can go home from work on time. Although, because I work from home, so I'm not sure I actually go home on time anymore. But it just lets me, with confidence, when like, you know, um, 5.30 rolls around or when I don't feel like working anymore. I know at least I've been doing tests and stuff and that the code, the tasks that I worked on that day, I know they all work the way that they're supposed to. So consider the idea of tests as a defense mechanism to let you go home on time. Yeah, and then we did this one thing. I had a slide there. Um, we're almost there. So envy, envious of, of things around you. Um, lack of control over the environment your code runs in is a humongous problem for trying to fix bugs and write tests. So what can we do? Composer, of course, can play double duty by enforcing the library. So again, we get rid of that it works for me bug, okay? Uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend the use of virtualization in development. Vagrant is an easy way to do that. Vagrant, for those, who, who, who here has used Vagrant? Awesome. For those who haven't, um, you should go look it up. Um, it will change how you do stuff. Um, at work, where, where I work, they have virtual machines for us to do our development work on but they, they came up with their whole system before Vagrant even existed, so they're actually a remote server, so I have to, that's why I'm a Vim guy. I connect via SSH and do my work there. Um, so virtual machines are good, and then once you get into that, then you understand that repeatable automated processes are the key to solving environment problems. You want everything to be repeatable, generating a new machine to be repeatable, running your tests to be repeatable, tagging things for review to be repeatable. Um, Computers are awesome at doing what we tell them over and over again, even though sometimes they, they're doing what we thought we told them to do, but they're actually doing something different. But um, make the computer do automated processes. So we talk about really quick with um, Composer, right? Like I said before, you can set all your versions for everything, uh, specify stuff, and again, I, I, I don't like to hear works on my machine. Um, so for those who haven't looked at it, go look at vagrantup.com. Um, Learn it, live it, love it. The reason why to do this stuff is like I explained, right? People make mistakes all the time. You see my little fake typo in there? Um, and computers make the mistakes that you tell them to make. Um, so always take a look at your procedures. See what can we automate, because again, there's no need to do something manually. Um, being an extremely lazy developer, I rely a lot on automation to do tasks that I don't want to do. Uh, almost there. The final one is lust as an obstacle to testing. We all know maintenance programming sucks. Half my work day is maintenance programming, fixing old stuff. Um, so what makes, what makes maintenance programming less sucky? Of course, good test suites, right? It makes fixing bugs easy, because you have a way to check that you haven't broken something else. Um, good test suites make it easier to integrate new things. You can write new code, integrate new libraries. Um, I had the fun task of, update, of uh, trying to upgrade 164 files. Um, I tried to do it automated, and then I got mad, and I did a git hard reset to dump all my changes, and I edited every MF and file by hand. 
um, to work all my anger out. It took me an hour and a half, but it was totally worth it. I felt much better afterwards. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, but I had to do new stuff, so, the, so our test suite was a very easy way for me after I made all these changes to make sure I hadn't broken anything. Um, and good test suites mean um, more time worrying about big problems. Um, so, much of a, so much of developers' time is sucked up doing trivial tasks. Um, many times we're just basically creating a very easy CRUD site, you know, a form, fill some stuff out, change stuff. We, we all would like to think that we're doing um, really awesome high-end important work, but you know, most of the time, I know it sucks, but we're not. We're doing something that's really simple. Um, and I find that what the tests do, the tests cover that when I have to do something trivial, um, I know that the instant I write the code and run the test, I will know. And then it frees up my mind to solve um, harder problems, like how to get a pack of magic cards shipped to the Buffalo office so I don't have to pay duties on it to, to get them sent to home, and things like that. Um, just I, I, use, I like the test suites because then it means I can I, it means I can worry about trying to solve a harder problem and know that the tests are acting like an extra set of eyes on my code to let me know if I've done something stupid and broken something trivial. And I think finally the good test suites mean way less time worrying about regressions. And by regressions I mean um, I mean that you word that you make a change over here and it breaks something elsewhere. Uh, at my employer, our test suite is like twenty thousand tests or something, um, and we have a code coverage in the ninety percent, which is actually pretty good, I think. Um, and we have complete confidence that if we change some code, our test suite will let us know. Um, so I'm almost done. We have uh, some shameless self-promotion. Uh, everything that I, that I have created to act as, if you're interested in getting into testing, these two books that I wrote, they're a bundle, 40 American dollars, which is like 100 Canadian, um, will get you down the road to teach you how to use PHP unit effectively and also how to structure your code. Many, many of the things I talk about in my presentations are in these two books, so of course, I highly recommend them. Uh, and finally, feel free to feed my ego. You can email me. Um, I read every email that's not flagged as spam. Um, I read every tweet on uh, Twitter, Grumpy Programmer. As an aside, I treat, be forewarned once you follow me, I treat Twitter like um, performance art many, many times. I am not in the real world like I am on Twitter because I would be unemployable and get fired all the time. Um, so thanks very much for uh, paying attention for a half hour. I had an awesome time at Ski, Ski PHP. I hope to come back, and I hope that all of you got something out of it, and I hope to see most of you back here next time. So thanks very much. <laughs>